Has there ever been a time where you were learning something and after you learned it, you were like, wow, this is so overly complicated, I could have made this 10 times easier. Well, that's what the Wiggers diagram is. And I don't mean that in a good way. So Carl Wiggers was like a big brain 300 IQ dude who made a diagram that depicts the pressure, EKG, and blood volume of the heart in one diagram. So he literally said, hold my beer, I'll make a really difficult diagram and make even professors sweat. So we're gonna go over it today. And you probably looked at the diagram and you were like, okay, this is gonna be a very difficult, long video. Well, here's the goal, is I wanna make this diagram so easy to understand, you'll be able to teach other people. Even professors have difficulty teaching this diagram. I'm not gonna lie, they do. It's because it's not really, it's just a lot going on. So before we begin, I need to talk about something called an isovolumetric contraction. The best way to explain what it is, is with this drawing. Imagine you have a cup. This cup has like juice or blood in it. And it has like a, it has a, a lid on the, on the top of it. Then what you do is you squeeze the cup. So you contract the cup. None of the liquid actually spills out. It's because it's a lid. That's what an isovolumetric contraction is. It's basically the contraction, but the volume stays the same. So in anatomy class or physiology or maybe like a biology class, you probably learned there are four chambers of the heart. There's also four valves in the heart and the valves prevent backflow. You probably learned there's the bicuspid or mitral valve, tricuspid valve, and the two semilunar valves. You also probably learned that if the semilunar valves, the two semilunar valves, if they are closed, that means the tricuspid and bicuspid valves must be open, and vice versa. That is true to an extent. Now, this is the, probably the po point where you're going to learn something new. There is the moments in the heart where all four valves are actually closed during the contraction. And that is what an isovolumetric contraction is. It's a contraction, but the volume stays the same because all four valves are closed. Now, if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, please watch my heart blood pathway video and the heart electrical pathway video. If you don't know anything about those two things, this video is gonna be a whole lot more difficult. So please watch that. I'll link in the description. One last thing you know is before we actually start on the diagram is in physics, things like to go from high pressure to low pressure. And this is gonna make a lot more sense in about one minute. So let's do it. So, as I said in the previous slide, what the Wiggers diagram looks at, what it measures, what it's showing us is the pressure of the heart. So here's pressure, pressure, pressure. The volume, the blood volume of the heart, and an EKG. In addition, like an optional thing it can show you is something called a phonocardiogram. So let's start with that first because it's, you don't really need to know it. You may be tested on it. I'm not sure what your professor's like, but let's just go over it really quickly. It's officially not really part of the Wiggers diagram, but let's just do it, why not? So what's happening in a photo, uh, phonocardiogram, it's basically like a machine that listens to your heart. It legitimately listens for noise in your heart. So the first thing it's gonna detect, this first, literally first, is called S1. S1 is the sound of the bicuspid and tricuspid valves closing. Those are the AV valves, the valves located between the atria and ventricles. S2 
is the semilunar valves closing, the pulmonary semilunar and aortic semilunar valves. They're closing. S3 is not important. Your heart can make unusual sounds or murmurs. This is what S3 is, this little bump here. Not really important. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Let's actually start with the Wigger's diagram. So you probably see there's a lot going on here. The trick with the Wigger's diagram is to look at the line that says ventricular pressure, the blue line. This is our guide point. This is our marker. This is what the line that we're trying to follow. If you follow this line, it will make life 10,000 times easier. Don't go trying to understand what all the other lines mean. They will come naturally as long as you follow the blue line, the ventricular pressure line. It's not blue in all the other diagrams. It just in this specific diagram, it's blue. So find that ventricular pressure line. Okay. Just to also note is that pressure increases on the y-axis. So this is the y-axis. Pressure increases as we go up. The other line that we also kind of need to focus on, but not too much, is the ventricular volume line. It's this, and the higher, the higher it goes, the more blood that's in the ventricles. Okay, and last thing is that this diagram is depicting the left, a, uh, left atria and left ventricles and, and aorta. However, it is kind of also depicting the right-hand side of the heart, the right atria and the right ventricles. Because whatever happens on the left-hand side of the heart also happens at the same time during the right-hand side. They're equivalent. So yes, you could actually say what, what you see here is also happening on the right-hand side of the heart. But officially, the Wigger's diagram is showing only the left-hand side of the heart. So the left atria, the left ventricle, and the aorta. That's the only things we're concerned about here. Okay, let's start. I'm going to take this really slowly. The first thing you're going to notice is the blue line. That's our, that's our guide point. That's our wave. That's our, um, what's the correct word? I have no idea what the correct word is. <laughs> but that's our marker. That's, what that, that's the line we're trying to follow. You'll also notice a tan-looking line. This is the atria pressure, atrial pressure, the tan, oops, the tan line. Okay, notice that the atria pressure is higher than our blue line, our ventricular pressure. This is important because it's telling us something. So this is, it's all about pressures. So here is a picture of the heart. Just for reference, this is the left atria. And this is the left ventricle. And this is the aorta. Okay. And then the heart gets basically split down this way. Okay. And then there is also a valve. This is the, oh, can you see that? Okay, let's do it, make it a little bigger. Ooh. I did not mean to do that. Sorry, that's a picture of a bar. <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be an amazing video. Okay. Okay, that's a valve. And then this is a valve right here. Okay. Now let's talk about the pressures now. In our Wigger's diagram, I mentioned that the atria pressure is higher than the ventricle pressure, the ventricular pressure. So let's, let's draw it on our heart model here. High, oops, what a disastrous video. High, so I'm saying high pressure, and this is low pressure. This is comparing them two. So the, currently, what we're looking at is the atria has a higher pressure than the ventricles. When this happens, remember, blood or things like to go from high pressure to low pressure. The blood in the atria 
wants to go down to the ventricles. We want to go from high to low. So what, hands, what ends up happening is the pressure from the atria kick open the valve right here. This is the bicuspid valve. Oops, let me just draw this one. Bicuspid mitral valve. So what ends up happening is that atria pressure is so high, it just pushes the valve open. So blood is able to freely go into the left ventricle. The valve is open. Okay, the valve is open here. The mitral valve is open. Now we're going to get to this point right here. Notice the ventricular pressure is higher than the atrial pressure. So we swapped. So let me... I don't want to like... There's no way of me of actually... Uh erasing that part okay so this is low Ooh. this is low and this is now high okay you're probably thinking since we want to go from high to low blood will just go this way that's actually incorrect the valves are there to prevent black backflow you cannot go backwards into the heart like the hard blood pathway only goes in one direction we only go forward we cannot go backwards valves prevent that think about this way this valve opens like this like it opens outwards like this it doesn't open inwards it doesn't open this way so the only way it can actually open is if the atria has enough pressure. If it's high atrial, atrial pressure, it'll open the valve. It doesn't work the other way around. You cannot push these doors in. They only can be pushed out. So the mitral valve is going to be closed. And that is depicted right there. Mitral valve is closed. Now let's go look at here now. Notice that we're going increasing in volume, in ventricular volume. That's because the atria contracted. Atria contracted, so the, the ventricles are filling with blood. And it's depicted right here. It's, we're increasing in blood volume. We're increasing in blood volume because the atria contracted. This is also evidence on the EKG, this P wave. In that EKG video, we went over what the P wave, the, P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave mean. This is evidence... Basically, we had electrical activity in the atria, which probably caused a contraction, which is evident by the amount of blood here. The atria contracted, that means the ventricle is filled up with blood, which is true because we have a higher blood volume level on this diagram. Okay, now the next part. This section right here. This is called isovolumetric contraction because notice that we are increasing pressure. With increased pressure, we are basically contracting because it's shown on the QRS complex. Even though the QRS complex does not prove contraction, just assume it does for this diagram. Assume it does prove contraction. So the QRS complex indicates that the ventricle is contracted. So we are increasing pressure, we contracted, but the blood volume stays the same. Right? We're, st we'll, we're gaining pressure, we are contracted, but we have still the same volume. This is this right here. Isovolumetric contraction. That's this segment right here. Okay. So this means all the valves are closed during isovolumetric contraction. All valves are closed. Now here, 
The red line is the pressure of the aorta, not the atria, the aorta. Notice that the pressure of the ventricles is higher than the aorta. Okay. So we're now talking about here. So this is low. High ventricular pressure, low aortic pressure. We want to go from high to low. It's going to push this valve open and blood will go into the aorta. The aortic valve opens, indicated right here. Aortic valve opens because the ventricular pressure is higher than the aorta pressure. We want to go forward. We don't want to go backwards. We always going forward. So the aortic valve opens. We are contracting now. Now what's happening is look at this pink line here. We're decreasing now as time goes on because the ventricles are contracting and we're dumping the blood into the aorta. If we dump the blood into the aorta, we're decreasing the amount of blood in the ventricles. There is now going to be a point in time where the aortic valve will close. This is when the aortic pressure is higher than the ventricular pressure. So this is going to be like, no, just cross this out. This is now going to be low and this is going to be high. Remember, we cannot go backwards. It's not possible for us to go backwards. We cannot go this way. We don't go backwards. We only go forward. So this valve is going to be closed. It's going to be shut because the ventricles don't have enough pressure to keep that open. It's the ventricular pressure that was keeping that valve open. Well, if it's low compared to the aorta, it's not going to open. And we only go forward. Remember that. So the aortic valve is closed. So we're going to decrease in pressure now because we're losing blood in the ventricles. This is also evidence by the T wave. Remember the T wave is basically the ventricles relaxing. The ventricles are relaxing now. We're calming down. Less pressure. We're relaxing. Remember, think about this. When you're tense and you're like, uh, yeah, just say you're anxious you're and you're tense or whatever. You're fill, you feel like you're filled with pressure, right? Your mind is filled with pressure. Well, when you're relaxed, you're calming down. You're reducing that pressure. You don't feel that pressure in your head. And that's what's happening. The very last important bit here is we're back to the atria and ventricle comparison. The mitral valve opens here. Because notice the atrial pressure is higher than the ventricular pressure, just like here. So we're literally back to this part right here. So this is like, uh, this is like high, and this is now low. That's like sloppy, low. So now we're able to open this valve. We're, op we're able to open the mitral valve. Which happens? We open the mitral valve. Ta-da! And we're going to begin to fill up with blood again because the mitral valve is open. That boundary, that gate is now open. The atria are contracting and now we can fill up with, we can fill blood with the ventricles. We can fill the blood with, uh, you can fill the ventricles with blood. Sorry. And then the cycle just repeats. And that right there is the Wigger's diagram. It looks super complicated, but notice we covered everything. We covered every single line. We covered the red line, the blue line, the tan line, the pink line, the green line, and even the non-important gray line. We did everything just by following that blue line. So I hope Hope this video was very informative and easy to follow.
If so, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for the support. I know I keep saying this, but we're almost at 180 subscribers. This is just amazing, man. Every single day, more and more subscribers. More people are joining the army. I love it. Thank you so much. So until next time, later.